Pinky. See, so you found the chat box. Welcome. So today we are talking about racking, stacking, and storage, and just the basics on it. So no matter what workplace you're in, you have some sort of racking, stacking, and storage. Um, and a lack of storage or disorganized storage system is a common problem that we see in many workplaces. When I go out for site visits, it's a big, big concern. They're blocking fire exits, they're blocking fire extinguishers, stacked items on the top of shelves are stacked too high, they're too close to the fire extinguisher or the fire sprinklers. We see it in all the workplaces. Have you ever just walked into a stock room or a closet to see the mess on the shelves? I know when I do, I have a slight panic and anxiety attack, <laughs> but that just might be the health and safety in me as well. Um, and it's not just an, un, an, an organizational nightmare, but it's also a huge health and safety risk. And the number of times that we've witnessed homemade solutions that are actually unsafe, is, it's frightening. We've seen so many MacGyvered racking and storage systems out in the workplace, and you might think it might be working, but it can be creating a bigger hazard than it is for you to be keeping all your stuff organized. So let's talk about it. So today you're gonna join the webinar and we're gonna rack our brains on how to safely stack our materials. So we have it all. Does this sound familiar? And I'm sure it does to everybody. We have no room for anything in here. We are running out of space. And I just said this the other day. I, I was talking to my fiance and I was like, we have no space for these gifts. There's no space for anything. And his answer was, well, let's just get rid of some stuff. And he was not wrong. But lack of storage and improper storage practices, they're a common problem for organizations across various industries and various workplaces. Most workplaces have some sort of racking and storage, but what do you guys have? Are you guys an industrial warehouse? Do you guys have just like endless, beyond the eye can see racks of, of things for storage, or do you just have a storage closet or just simply a shelving unit that's in the office for your office supplies? In every workplace, there is something we just, and sometimes it just gets overlooked. You don't even realize that you actually have a shelving unit or, or a racking because it just blends in with the workplace, right? But it is in every workplace and typically there is a, a an organizational issue or an influx of inventory that's causing some storage issues for sure so we have it all storage and pallet racks can help in answering the age-old question of where are we going to put this however the mismanagement of racking can lead to safety concerns Workplaces with racking and storage facilities may contain potentially serious hazards. The improper use, the improper selection, the installation or maintenance of the racking and storage systems, they can all put workers at risk of injury. So whenever we bring something into the workplace, even if it's simply just a plastic shelf that we're getting from Walmart, we need to assess A, where we're gonna put it, and B, what are the risks of introducing this into the workplace? What are the risks of to our workers? Can this fall over? Can this hurt somebody? Is somebody gonna get hurt setting it up? Do we need a professional to set this up? Anything we bring into the workplace, we need to make sure that we're assessing the risk of how it's going to be affecting our workers. Cause that's the point of any health and safety system, right? Is to protect our workers from injury. And racking and stacking and storage, it's still part of that. So without the proper planning and design, moving materials on and off racking system by hand or with the use of say a forklift, um, to move those pallets on and off, it can still place workers at risk. So things to, to consider, is there enough room to maneuver? Is there a clear plan for the items? Are the aisles free of obstructions? Is lighting adequate? Are and the pallets, are, are they in good condition? So when I walk into a workplace and I see their racking system, I immediately think, is this, is this aisle big enough for a forklift to get in here and to turn around? Or even if it's just a walk-in closet, is this aisle big enough for me to squat down, use proper ergonomics and get that bottom box off of the bottom shelf? Can I successfully do that? Or is it too tight? Is there too many things stacked on the floor that I can't even squat down to pick something up? I, I have to weasel my way in between there because it's so tight. When we're thinking racking and tacking, racking and stacking storage systems, we have to plan for how are we gonna get that product on and off the shelf safely? whether we're doing it by hand or whether we're doing it with a forklift or a pallet jack or an order picker, whatever it might it may be. We have to plan ahead. It's not just where are we gonna put the racking, it's how do we get it on and off? And then what's also supporting the racking? We have to look at the big picture. And lighting, lighting is key. 
I've been to many workplaces where storage is an issue and they rent those uh, or they purchase those sea cans, the, the shipping containers, and they put them in the back parking lot. And then they, they have the items that they don't use a lot. They store them in those containers. But then when employees are going into those containers to get that infrequently used item, there's no lights in there. They haven't thought about it. Or people have just been shoving stuff in there and nothing has been organized. So how do they get to that back item? There's no walkway. That's a hazard. How do they know when another employee is in there that they're not, and, and how do they flag to the other employees that somebody's in that seat container so that they don't get locked in there? With every racking and storage system, there needs to be a plan and we need to make sure that it's designed properly and it's safe for our employees. So storage and rack system failures. So poor storage rack design, the rack is inherently unsafe. So we look at that first photo, you can see the shelves are just bowing. Maybe it's because we didn't know the rating capacity of that. Maybe we bought the wrong racking. Maybe it's just too much weight on there. The incorrect installation and assembly. Follow the instructions. If we've learned anything from Ikea, it's you need to follow the instructions to put it together safely. Using the wrong type of racking for what you intend to store. So if we're going to be storing flammable products, we need to make sure that it's on the proper racking that it needs to be able to say, does that racking need to be grounded and bonded to the ground so that there's no sparks? And then using the wrong material handling equipment to load and unload items in the storage system. So are, are we using a forklift to get the pallets off of there when really they shouldn't be stored on the pallets, they should be manually placed onto the shelves because it's something fragile? Or should we be using the order picker or the narrow aisle reach truck instead of the forklift to be able to get it off? We need to make sure that we're using the right equipment to load and unload the materials on the racking. And then operator error when using material handling equipment. Like I said before, there's how many viral videos have we seen going around where that forklift has backed up or just bumped into a racking and it, it was just dominoes and it all just tips and it's thousands and thousands of dollars wasted on materials because the operator wasn't paying attention and they bumped into the, the racking. But if we look at it, sometimes when I look at those videos, I'm like, yeah, no wonder he bumped into it because there was no room for them to turn around. It was too crowded. So those are all things we need to look into. It can't, it's not always just operator error. Sometimes it's the design, the design of it. And then structural problems with the floors or walls of the storage area, such as overloaded supporting structures or floors that aren't sufficiently level. Do you have a mezzanine or an attic in your workplace that you're using for storage? I've been to many workplaces where they've built a loft or a mezzanine, and maybe that mezzanine or loft is en like engineered rated, but did they include all of the weight that comes from A, the racking and the shelves, and all of the weight that goes on top of them? I, it's very frightening if we go up into a loft or a mezzanine and we see the floors bowing. That is not okay. We need to make sure that where we're, we're putting that racking and those materials, where we're storing them, they can be properly supported. If they're on the ground level, you're not going to have too many problems with that. But if it's on the second level, if it's in an attic or a mezzanine, things you definitely need to consider. So hazards that may occur. Poorly stacked or falling over materials. It's my pet peeve when I walk into a storage room and I see boxes that are just hanging over the edge of it. And I'm like, why? Just push it back. If it's hanging over the edge, that shelf is too full. You need a different spot. Overreaching, big ergonomic concern, MSD hazard, musculoskeletal disorder hazard, reaching overhead. If you're constantly reaching overhead, and especially if you're trying to grab a heavy item that's overhead and try to bring that down, you are exposing your shoulders and even your head to injury because it's, it's not within the power lifting zone, which is from the top of your chest down to your waist. That's the power lifting zone. That's a safe lifting zone. That's why we say put the heavier items on the bottom so you can squat down, pull the material off, pull it within your power lifting zone, and then stand up. If you're going overhead with that, you're going outside of that zone and you're exposing yourself to injury. So reaching overhead, make sure you're doing that with your light items and infrequently needed items. So struck by other lifting devices. Think about it in the warehouse. Does your warehouse have designated pedestrian walkways? Do they have their own space where they can walk in and not have to worry about the forklifts or to get into the racking storage that they need to, that they need to walk in to get to? Or do they need to be going into an aisle where there is a forklift running? 
think about that. We need to think about our pedestrian safety in our racking and storage areas as well. And then shelves that are collapsing from being overloaded. Could only imagine walking in and seeing a storage system and the shelf is just bowling and then trying to get an item from underneath of it and you don't realize that that item that's underneath is actually also supporting that that bowed shelf you're going to pull that box out and that entire shelf is going to collapse that is not okay and it exposes you to injury because then once that shelves collapse everything else can come off the racking can tip and it's it can be a whole mess so injury from trying to get a heavy object down from a high place Tripping or falling over stock that's stacked on the floor. If we're going to be stacking items on the floor, we need to make sure that they are not blocking the fire exits or hallways or doorways, or they're not close to the fire suppression systems. They're not blocking the fire extinguishers. If we're going to be stacking things on the floor, you need to have a clear walkway and a clear path for your employees to be walking in and out of that storage area. Do not block any emergency exits, even if you never had to use it and the, the sign is burnt out. Never, ever put any stock or storage in front of a, an emergency exit. You never know. And it is just, it is poor design. It does not need to be there. If you have that much overflow, get rid of it. That emergency exit is key. So then our different types of injuries. So the most common injuries resulting from poor storage and stacking hazards are, you can probably guess majority of them, Cuts and scrapes, head injuries from things falling on them, strains from lifting heavy boxes or from reaching overhead or from awkward uh, positions trying to get in and out of. If you can't properly squat down or bend to, to lift, you're putting yourself into an awkward position. Um, you can get a lot of neck strains, back strains, hamstring strains, all of that kind of stuff. Broken bones, if the materials are heavy enough and they land on your arm, you can break your arm, you can break your leg from tripping. Back injuries are a huge one. And burns. If you are storing hazardous materials on that racking system, on those, say it's chemicals or it's something flammable, if that system fails and all those chemicals come crashing down, are they going to mix? Are they going to cause an explosion? Are they going to burn an employee? There's a lot of things that can happen. You need to be aware of what is being stored on those shelves. And labeling WIMIS is key. So what to do? Employers should ensure that materials are stored securely so they do not create a safety hazard or danger to their workers. Obvious. Everything that we're going to be storing needs to be stored in a proper manner and it needs to be stored in accordance with that whatever it is. If it's a chemical, if it's a hazardous product, it needs to be stored properly according to the safety data sheet. And in accordance with everything else that's going to be stored on that shelf. So employers across Canada have a, gen a general legal responsibility to provide equipment in good condition and ensure the safe storage and handling of materials. Even if your provincial regulations and acts do not specifically speak to proper storage and handling, it always falls under the general liability duty clause. Every employer is required to do everything that is reasonably practical to protect their employees, to protect their health and safety. And that includes storage and racking systems and how we, how we load and unload those storage and racking systems. And employers need to treat storage racking like any other equipment or device used in the workplace. So say we need to get, we're in a storage space and we're like, this racking is garbage. We need to get rid of it. It's Boeing. It's, it's not matching our, 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 what we need it to hold. So we're gonna get a new racking system. We need to first assess, walk in that room or assess that space and determine what is it that we need in here? What can we fit in here? And then go look for that racking. And if you're looking for racking and storage and even something from Walmart, make sure that it has that capacity rating on it. Why would you want to buy something that you don't know how much it can hold, right? Make sure you have that capacity rating and make sure it works and it fits for that space. And then also plan around your emergency exits, your fire extinguishers, your fire suppression systems. Think about the whole space, not just what can we all shove in here, but how do we make this work? Employers need to include details on how to effectively manage all aspects of the racking selection, including installation, the capacity, the use, the inspection, reporting, modifications, repair, and dismantling. If some of, say an employee finds some default in the racking, they report it, it gets corrected. That modification, did that modification actually alter any structural components of the racking or was it just reinforcing some bowed shelving? Either way, you need to refer back to the owner's manual to say if this is happening and we made a modification to it, does the warranty get voided? Are we allowed to do that? Do we need to get this recertified by an engineer? 
Or do we need to look at why was the shelf bowing? Why does the corner of this wrapping bent? Did somebody run into it? Maybe we need to move this. Maybe we need to do some more training. Maybe we need to buy more hefty racking so that the shelves don't keep bowing. If you're making modifications, ask yourself why. And then choosing the proper racking and storage unit. So number one, first assess the available space, whether it's the floor or the entire wall. Think about that space that you're going into. What can we fit in here? What works best? And like I said before, address where all those emergency exits are, the fire extinguishers, any big items you know that are not going to fit on the racking, how are we going to store those? And then analyze the depth, the width, the length of for proper and precise measurements. Uh, these measurements will be the deciding factor for the overall shelving unit. Get the tape measure out. Make sure that you're measuring the area and you know what you can fit in there. Don't buy something that's too big and then try to squeeze it in there or MacGyver it to make it work. Buy the racking that's going to fit. And the material selected for the shelving is another major concern and it's dependent upon the purpose and what you're going to be storing on that racking system. The material needs to be strong enough for a high density storage. Glass, wood, plastic, or metal are common, very common materials for shelving units. If you need a shelving unit for your warehouse, consider selecting metal as the material. If you need a shelving unit for your office, you can do wood shelving, plastic shelving. It depends all what's going to go on there. Things to consider. Are you storing flammable products? How heavy are the products that you're storing? Did you check the safety data sheet for storage information if you're storing chemicals? What else is going on that storage system? If you only have um, one tub full of chemicals, Maybe we can put them in a tub so that they are completely sealed because you don't want to be storing chemicals on the top shelf and then have fresh produce or people's lunches on the, the shelf below. What if those chemicals were to somehow explode or to leak? You want that leaking onto what's below? No, we need to think about what's going on there and especially if they're hazardous chemicals or anything like that. You need to pay attention to what is going on the shelving. And if it's flammable, you really want a wood shelf? I wouldn't. <laughs> If it's flammable, make sure you're getting those metals or if it's a fully flammable cabinet that you need, read those safety data sheets. Think about what is going on those shelving units. So then correct storage and stacking methods. So these are some pretty common sense things, but that's what health and safety is. It's common sense that we just reiterate to a lot of people. So store most frequently used items at the average waist height. Like we talked about before. You have a power lifting zone and it's from the top of your chest down to your waist. That's your power lifting zone. So for those frequently used items, store them on the middle shelf where most people it's within their lifting, their power lifting zone. So that we're avoiding any back injuries, any overreaching, any awkward postures. And then store infrequently used items clearly marked in permanent locations. We all have, typically, there are some sort of Christmas decorations or office party decorations. We don't need those all the time, just on special occasions. Put them in a tub, label them, put them where you only need to access them at once a year, twice a year, whatever you might need it. That doesn't need to be right in the front of everything else and take up space for things that you need to access every day, right? But label them, store them properly, label it, and then put it so you can easily find it. Store lighter items higher up on the shelves or the racks. We always do the same thing. So the heaviest at the bottom and then the most frequently used in the middle and then your lightest items up at the top. Store heavier objects lower on, lower on the shelves or the racks and then do not stack items on cabinets or shelves that don't have any end barriers. So when we're talking about a, a, a racking or a shelving unit, there should be a little lip right on the front of the, on the shelf that prevents anything from sliding off. It just secures it a little bit more. So don't stack items on those shelves that don't have those barriers. So on that very top shelf, if there's no lip, if there's no barrier, don't be putting anything up there. Don't be, if there's there's a lip on the front, but none on the sides, make sure that you're staying away from the, the side. That way, nothing is falling off. Nothing can easily slide off if that rack gets bumped into. Um, and then sort files and books within the shelves themselves. So when racking has not been inspected or maintained, modified or damaged, the racking has the potential to become unstable or collapse resulting in catastrophic consequences. 
how many times have we seen those videos, those forklifts running into something and everything's tipping and all I can think of is, yeah, wasted product, wasted all this. But what if somebody else was in that aisle? How are they protected? Are they okay? We need to make sure that we're doing our monthly inspections and the racking and shelving and storage is not getting missed. It often does frequently get missed because it just gets overlooked. It's part of the room. It's been there for so long and it's been doing its job for so long. We haven't even had to touch it. We haven't had to look at it, but we need to make sure that we're inspecting it. Make it a rule of thumb and it should be in every workplace. As soon as you see something, you see a hazard, you report it because it needs to be reported because we need to fix it. It doesn't need to wait for the safety committee or the rep to find it during the monthly inspection. Report it now, get it fixed so that something doesn't happen, so that nobody gets hurt. So the solution, ensure that any racks you use to store materials in your workplace are one, designed, assembled, and maintained to support the weight of the materials they're expected to carry. Most manufacturers provide a safe load or working limit for their racks. Make sure you're buying something with a capacity limit. If it's not rated, I honestly would not buy it. If you don't know how much it can hold and the purpose of it, what is the point of having it? You need to know that it can hold what you want it to and that it's going to be safe and it's going to be sturdy and it's going to do its job. Make sure that you place that racking on a firm and level foundation. Again, if we're up in the attic or if we're up in a mezzanine or something, we're going to want to check out the floorboards. You're going to want to check out the floor beneath it. Can, can the mezzanine, can the loft hold this amount of weight? What can we actually successfully store up here without causing any damage? And I mean, structural support, it's not something you want to play around with. You want to make sure that that racking is on firm and level, a uh, firm and level foundation. Number three, adequate, adequately anchor or brace depending on their height so that it doesn't tip over. Just made a trip to Ikea to get a new uh, wardrobe for my bedroom. So they still have those signs absolutely everywhere that says this must be anchored. This must be anchored to the wall and must be secured so that it cannot tip over. We're always afraid of kids climbing on those. <laughs> Do you want your employees climbing on racking? Absolutely not. But it needs to be secured from tipping because what if they accidentally bump into it? Say they're just, it's just the storage closet and they're sweeping or they're mopping and they bump into it. Is that going to tip? Is that going to fall over on them? You need to make sure that it is secured. It is something that is very easy. You can bolt it to the floor, bolt it to the wall, tie it into a stud, and it can save a lot of injury. Number four is able to support the loads placed on them if it's used outdoors and exposed to the wind, wind gusts, and other environmental conditions. If you have storage systems outside in the workplace, which a lot of workplaces do because they can they keep things outside, you need to make sure that, that racking is meant to be outside. Can it withstand those weather conditions? And for sure that needs to be anchored down because we get those crazy wind storms, we get thunderstorms, we get all kinds of weather. And do you really want a, a wooden racking system outside in the winter? It needs to be sealed so that it makes sure that the, the rain and the snow and the sleet doesn't get in there and it doesn't cause wood rot. You need to think about where this racking and storage is going to go and the environmental conditions that's going to be exposed to. and inspections. So you should regularly inspect your storage racks, your shelvings, and inspect them for damage and other defects that might impact their ability to safely store those materials. Every month, every workplace needs to be inspected by the safety committee or the safety rep. Make sure that on their workplace inspection checklist, they have an area designed or that specifically states the racking. You can even go as far as to say the racking shelving unit in the office closet. Racking and shelving unit, the red one, if they're color coded, right? Make sure that all of those units are listed on the workplace inspection so that they are not overlooked. How many times do they actually get overlooked? Because it's just part of the room. You don't see it anymore. It's just part of it. You need to make sure that they're, they're checked for any damage, for any bowing, for any incidents from the forklift running into it, all of that. Make sure that they're checked at least on a monthly basis. During the checks, we want to ensure that the upright structure, it isn't twisted or out of place. Check the beams and the shelves for sagging or defects, and which you could, which you can all indicate that it's being overloaded. So while we're looking at it, we don't, we want to do a visual inspection. And you know what? 
pull a couple boxes off. If you see there's some dust on the boxes, clearly they haven't moved in a while. Let's take them off, see how the shelf underneath is doing. Let's look at the cross beams. If a shelf is bowing and the box underneath is what's actually holding it up, we have a problem, right? Start moving some things around to make sure that it is all still doing what it needs to be and there's no long-term damage from a box sitting there for so long that it hasn't been touched. And in addition to regular inspections, always inspects racks after any equipment such as forklifts have crashed or knocked into them. If there has been an incident, somebody has bumped into the racking, whether you, you yourself, your body has just bumped into it, or a piece of equipment has bumped into it, do a thorough inspection. Make sure that that rack, the structural integrity of that racking has not been compromised. You do not want that racking falling apart. You do not want it tipping because somebody ran into it replace it if you're not sure about it get it replaced tag it out get it looked at get an engineer in there and then repair any damage identified in these inspections or replace the damaged part if necessary again if you're going to be correcting and fixing some items yourself make sure that it isn't affecting the structural integrity of the racking itself keep in mind that Yes, maintenance might be able to fix this shelf and maybe they'll put a, a new piece of plywood on there and, and take the old one off. Well, let's actually think about it. Let's get down to the root cause. Why is this plywood always bending? Why does the shelf always keep bending? Or why does the forklift always keep running into this exact same spot? Maybe we need to look at redesigning it or getting something else or getting a stronger shelf or getting um, moving that racking location. Or maybe we need to put some of those cement pillars right there so that racking doesn't get hurt. We need to reiterate to our operators don't be running into the corners. Don't be cutting corners. So things to look for during an inspection. So overstacking of shelves, keeping items and equipment in a corner or in a walkway. If you have a bunch of uh, materials that are blocking a walkway, you want to get that cleared up. Especially if it's in a tight storage room and you're storing things on the floor, you need to make sure that there is enough room for the employees to get in and out safely and that they can actually squat down and pick up the boxes that they need to and not be putting themselves into an awkward position. And that also includes the lighting. If they cannot see what they're looking for, they're gonna start walking into the racking, they're gonna start walking into the materials, everything comes into play. So if you see a bunch of materials that are, that are just stacked up and heaping in a corner, can we get rid of some of this? Can we rearrange some of this? Can we start putting all these small items into one big tub and throw it on the shelf? It, take that as a sign that it's there's a poor storage system and we need to look at it somehow. And then while you're doing your inspections, make sure you're looking for perching items on the edges of any tables or desks. Do not let anything be overhanging. As soon as it's overhanging, it, you, it increases the risk of you just running into it and knocking it off. A, it's an injury to you because you ran into something and B, you're probably going to have damaged, damaged materials then from it falling off the shelf and it can even hurt somebody else. And then stacking heavy stock on top of lighter materials. Do not be stacking a heavy box on top of a lighter box. It's got to go the other way around. In fact, I don't even like seeing a lot of boxes stacked on top of each other unless that's what they're designed for. Put the box, say, in a crate or even on like a 2x4 or something just so that it has more of that support. The top of an actual cardboard box, say, is not meant to have something stored on top of it. That is just the top to close off the box. Make sure that when you're stacking items, they are stacked safely and properly and that they're not going to cause bowing and any damage as well. And then storing heavy objects high up, forcing you to reach for them. If you see that during your inspections, mark it down as a hazard. You can even correct it right then and there if you can. But when you see those heavy objects that are up high and you have to reach overhead, think, should I be getting a ladder to go get this or should I be asking for help to get this item down? Don't be doing it yourself. If you can, raise yourself up to that level so that you can lift within the power zone, which means you might be getting a ladder, but only use a ladder if you're trained and authorized to, or ask for help from somebody else. And then combining food stuff with chemicals. Do not be storing chemicals over top of fresh produce or any sort of food. Put those chemicals either on the bottom or the closest you can to a shelf or in a cupboard somewhere so that if there's a chance that any of those could leak, you don't want it contaminating anything else that's below it. If you have flammable substances, make sure that they are being stored in a flammable cupboard or a flame-proof cupboard or in the proper way that the SDS says. 
Things you can also look for are using unstable shelving or benches, not using the end protection on shelves. So even if we look at this, this photo that we have here, and that's an actual just bookshelf, right? There's no ends to the bookshelf. Those books could technically just flop over and then start falling off. Let's, how do we prevent that? Let's put some bookends on there. Or let's get an actual enclosed bookshelf that isn't just a floating shelf. Or we put something on there that can't actually tip over. And then having shelving that's too high to easily reach. I am all about ergonomic design. I mean, that's also my background in kinesiology. I am big into body mechanics and ergonomic design. If something is out of my reach or I will not use something if it's, if it's out of my reach. If it's something that employees need to have access to on a day-to-day -day basis, don't be putting that up on the top shelf where it's hard for them to access it. A, they're probably never going to get it and that means they're never going to use what they're supposed to be. And B, it's a reaching overhead hazard and it's a biomechanical hazard. It's just going to lead to an injury. Think about where you're storing system. It should be a whole system of when you're organizing something. If at, you know you need a certain product first every day, well, let's put that item on the very front of the shelf. We need the, the second item second, let's put that behind it. Or we can organize it from left to right. So we know that we always start on the left side and then we end up on the right side. Think about what it is you're storing and how to best access it and make it a system because then it's easy for employees to put those items back. Labeling is huge. When I go into uh, mechanic workshops and stuff like that, I love seeing a wall that's fully labeled. Screwdrivers, hammers, power guns, all that kind of stuff. Label it so that they can put it back. And when it's not back, you're like, where is this? Where's the power gun? Why isn't it back in its home? Everybody knows where it needs to go then. And then stacking items in front of a fire exit. Do not do this. Do not do this. It is not worth it. Even if you have two exits that are side by side, do not be blocking a fire exit. And then storing frequently used items on high and low shelves. Again, if it's something that's frequently used, put it in the middle. Put it within the power lifting zone so that it's easy to grab and use it as a system. Mark it out. So I really want to touch on load rating capacities. Make sure that you are not overloading the racking and storage units. Each unit should have the load rating capacity marked on it. And if you are using alternative racking, like say something that's homemade, then you should have an engineer determine the load capacity rating. De depending on the unit, you can get the load capacity rating directly from the manufacturer, which you should be, especially for workplaces, or from, from the box. So for example, if you buy a plastic shelf from Walmart or Canadian Tire, it should tell you the rating capacity. If some sort of racking or storage system has no rating capacity, I recommend you don't buy it. Why would you want to purchase something and put something into your workplace that you have no idea how much it can hold? You don't know that it's going to be able to do the purpose that you need it for. Make sure that you are looking for the load capacity rating. And then once you determine what that is, post it in the workplace. Make sure that it doesn't get overloaded. Okay, so then reducing the need for storage space. A lot of organizational issues we have is because there's just an influx of inventory or an influx or just a, a, the sheer volume of stuff that has to be stored. Let's purge. Let's get rid of the things that we don't actually even need or we haven't, we haven't used it in five years. Great. Let's get rid of it. So order the minimal amount of material that you need to keep in stock. I love Costco just like the next person, but I... I'm not buying three things of the giant toilet papers because I have nowhere to store them. I would rather go back and get one at a time. It's still buying in bulk. It's still cheaper that way. But get the minimal amount of material that you need to keep in stock so you're not just storing all these materials all the time. Keep a good record of what you use and identify the fast-moving items that you need to order. So if you're constantly going, say, going through Band-Aids or Lysol wipes or hand sanitizer because that's just the world that we live in now, Make sure that those are your, your categorizes, your fast moving items, and you always have them on reorder. Maybe those are the certain items that you do want to have a certain stock supply for, right? But you don't need it for anything else. Have that stock supply for your fast moving items. And also what I recommend doing, and I know we kind of live in a world right now where deliveries can be delayed a lot because 
because of all of the amount of deliveries that are happening, right? But try to keep track of how fast those items get delivered to you from order from being placed to actually delivered, because then you know in advance how far ahead you have to order them. Okay, we're down to three hand sanitizers. We need more and it takes six weeks. Let's order them. We'll be, good. We'll be done these three in the next six weeks and then our, our next shipment will be in. Reduce the stock of, of slow moving items and order them only when you need it. Order the fast moving stock more frequently, but in those smaller amounts so that it reduces the amount of storage area that you actually need. If we reduce our footprint, we don't actually need that much space to store everything. So let's purge. Let's just not have endless quantities of something because we might need it. We might get to it later. It's a lot of those, those, those items too. I found when I bought my house, I moved from an apartment into a house. I could barely fill up my kitchen and my bedroom. That's enough furniture that I have. And now every single closet in my house has something in it. Do I need any of this? Probably not, but I have a space for it. So I store it. We need to flip that mindset. Let's only store the things that we know that we actually need. Let's not just keep it for a rainy day and we haven't touched it in 12 years. Get rid of it. Give it to another home. So the benefits of proper storage and stacking. So locating things are easier and therefore you're saving more time. If you send an employee out to the rack and into the storage, into the warehouse, and they're looking for one specific item and it takes them more than 20 minutes to find it, you need a better system. They need, they, it should be labeled. It should have an inventory. You should know exactly where you need to go to get that. You're saving space. If you have proper storage and stacking, you're saving space. I am big on having a less con and the next one a less congested workplace i am big on not having a lot of clutter clutter to me equals distractions if something is cluttered and taking up space and it doesn't even need to be there to me i want to get rid of it it's just another distraction if it's organized and the space is open i have a free mind and i can think about what i actually need to be doing not oh i need to move that box i need it's bowling i'm looking at it it's gotta go no it's already set up it's nice and clean we have space for this and it's, it's just more efficient. And then reducing the damage to equipment and materials. If you have a proper racking and storage system set up, you will reduce the amount of times that a forklift operator actually drives into there. If you have a good system in place and you still get one operator that's driving into it, you should probably do an investigation and find out why and also do some retraining with your staff. They should not be driving into anything. And reducing the amount of stock on hand, again, save that space. Only keep what you actually need and keep a couple weeks supply of it. We don't need to have five year supply of something. And then the biggest benefit all is we're reducing injuries and work loss time. We can be more productive and we're keeping our employees safe because of the organization that we have and the proper system that's in place. So there's a lot of different benefits. So we do have a call to action. Think about your existing material practices. When was the last time that your racking storage and, and storage systems were actually inspected? Is there room for improvement? Go through your last few months workplace inspections. Did the safety committee, did the rep actually mark off saying that, yes, I looked at this racking. Yes, the cross beam is still in place. The supports are in place. The floor isn't blowing. The shelves aren't blowing. Look at those workplace inspections. Are they actually looking at those items or are they just breezing by them because they're just overlooking them because it's just part of the room. Make sure that the committee and your reps are doing the proper inspections on a monthly basis and they're checking those. And think about outside as well. If you have storage systems that are outside and they're in the weather, they're under, they're exposed to those environmental conditions, make sure that they're getting outside and they're checking that racking. They need to make sure that those are still in good condition. And I mean, that's just the monthly inspections by the safety committee and the safety rep. Every employee that is walking by that racking, have a look, see if there's anything wrong with it. If they are accessing that racking or shelving because they need to put something on or take something off, they should be doing a visual inspection to see if there's anything that's wrong with it and then reporting it, getting it fixed. Once it gets reported, Let's look at it. How do we fix this? Can we fix this ourselves? Or are we then gonna change the entire structure of the racking system? Do we need to call in a professional or should we just scrap it and get a whole new system, right? Let's start with all the way from inspections all the way down to fixing it and then getting it out of there if it's broken. So is there room for improvement? I would think there's room for improvement. 
in a lot of workplaces. I've done a few site visits in my day and the amount of times that I have seen homemade racking and storage systems, while they do work and some of them are, are built very, very well and they're anchored, anchored to the wall and to the floors, it still worries me when I cannot have a capacity rating on those homemade systems. If it's a, a wooden shelf and say it's only light items, say like, like a Christmas decorations or just even a water bottle, something that is not very heavy or not very flammable or like, I, I'm more okay with it that way then, right? But if you're using those homemade storage systems, you can even try to determine those capacity ratings yourselves. A lot of those, those pieces of wood and lumber, they do come with a capacity rating itself and you could try to figure that out. Or if it's such a, an awkward space that you need to be having your own designed shelving and racking system in there, I would get an engineer in there and get them to certify it or even get a blueprint and tell them how, get them to tell you how it would be best designed. I would absolutely love to pay somebody to come into my house and just organize everything for me. That way I know it's set up in a system and it's in the right spot. Consider that for the workplace, especially if you're, a, say, a big warehouse. Get somebody in there to make sure that the racking is in the most efficient spot. We have the proper lighting. All the rating, all the ratings on the racking are visible. During the workplace inspections, make sure that they're also checking that the capacity ratings on those racking levels or on the racking and the shelving and the storage, it's still visible and they can see it right? They, they're not going to take every item off of the shelf and weigh it and make sure that we're not above it or above the capacity rating, but it needs to be posted. We need to be aware of it. We think, oh, that's probably getting close to that. We should probably store this someplace else, right? Make sure that the safety committee is looking for all those things during the monthly inspections and everybody else is made aware of them. Make it part of your employee orientation. This is our storage system. It can't go past this amount of capacity rating. If you're going to put something else on here, you need to tell us because we're already full, right? If you see something that needs to be arranged, by all means. But if it's heavy, make sure it's on the bottom. Make it part of your orientation so that everybody is on the same page. And what I like to also see is during the committee's monthly workplace inspections and the safety reps inspections, grab somebody that's not on the safety committee. Grab somebody that is in that room or working within the racking and storage systems frequently because they are more exposed to it. They know the, the, the kinks about it. They know... Um, when something is out of place and if something is over capacity rating, involve them in the safety committee inspections as well because it's just another set of eyes. Yes, the inspections have to be led by the worker reps, but bring somebody else with them. Bring a guest along and it, it then involves them into the safety committee as well, right? All different things to take a look at for sure. So poor materials storage practices can create serious safety hazards. I do not want to hear about anybody getting hurt because of a shelf that fell or a box that fell off the shelf that nobody should be getting hurt that way at work. It should be a proper system. It should be stored properly. Nobody needs to be getting hurt because of that. And protect your workers, protect your materials and protect your workplace. And you're ultimately protecting your budget as well. If you don't have employees that are constantly wasting their time looking for a product because the system, the storage system is so poor that they can't find it. They're wasting hours looking for it or reorganizing it or to get something that's on the back of the shelf, they have to pull everything off and then put everything back on. Is that the best way to do that? Should that item be stored someplace else? Always be open for suggestions. And I mean, labeling to me is the biggest key that we can do for storage. Label where everything is, give everything a home. If it doesn't go back in its home, why? Why are you leaving this on your workbench? Put it away. Put it away. Housekeeping and racking and storage and organization all work together. So if you're looking for some extra references that we, we use throughout this PowerPoint, there's a few from OSG, from OHNS Insider, uh, the Rack Line, and of course the Government of Ontario. They have some information on the racking and storage systems as well. And by all means, if you haven't already, make sure that you connect with us. Make sure to get connected by following us on social media. We share tips and important information about our programs and services. I'm sure all of you are signed up for our monthly newsletters, but we have these new comic strips and I absolutely love them. And we've been posting them on social media and they're so fun and they've got good points and good messages with them. So by all means, check us out. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on LinkedIn as well. And thank you so much for coming to today's webinar. Um, if anybody's got any questions or any like say horror stories, um, sorry, Kelly, can you please put up page 22 again? Yes. 
Here you go. Those are the references. If anybody's got any horror stories or learning experiences or suggestions, um, by all means, let us know. You can type into the chat. You can give us a call. You can send us an email. Um, I hope today was helpful for all of you and thinking about it. Even in the workplace, all of, all of these racking and storage tips, they carry over into your home life. I'm literally picturing our garage right now and how much of a mess it is just because we built a fence. So there's just piles of wood in there and screws and everything. And I'm like, I need to reorganize all of this. It all needs to find a better home. We need to keep putting things away. But yeah, it all carries over into your home life, right? Just like I'm trying to design my kitchen. <laughs> I had a friend, um, she moved in with her boyfriend and she's about, she's a short girl, about five feet tall. And she's like, yeah, my boyfriend moved in and he moved all of the wine glasses to the top shelf. I can't reach them. <laughs> to me, that's not a very good system, right? <laughs> uh, so we do have some comments too. This was great. I had missed some parts in the middle. Yes, it'll all be published. The presentation, uh, it'll be posted up on our webinar archive on Systems 24-7 on our website. So you can download the PowerPoint and the recording. Do you have a diagram of the body power zone? That is actually a really great suggestion. So maybe what I can do is maybe with the PowerPoint or maybe with the webinar, we can send out either a safety talk or a poster or something. I'm sure we have something somewhere. Um, you know what, send us an email too to our info email. Here, I'll put that up again. And I'll see what we can have. And I can send you a diagram of the power lifting zone. It's just that zone right from the top of the chest to the waist because that is the most sturdy part in our body, right? It's, it's our arms are, that's where our arms are designed to reach and to carry things. When we need to squat down, put it into that power zone, lift it up and carry it near our core. Our core is our, our, our strength that supports our spine. So it's your stomach and your back muscles. That's your entire core and that's essentially the power lifting zone. But by all means, yes, send us an email into the info email and I'll see what we can get for you, okay? That's a really good idea. Thank you so much for everybody for participating. I want to present to our GHC. Yes, by all means. It's a good it's a good presentation for your Joint Health and Safety Committee because it'll get them thinking about when they're walking around doing their inspections about the racking system. I bet you there's some there's some racking that you don't even realize that is in the workplace. You just walk past it. It's just part of the room now. I know I've done that before. I walked in and and I'm like, wow, that shelf over there is completely bowing. And when I do a workplace inspection and the person I'm with are like, wow, yeah, I didn't even notice that. I forgot about it. It's just part of the room, right? Get those fresh eyes in there. Bring in the safety committee. Bring a guest in there to, to, to get some fresh eyes looking at everything. You get a lot more hey, uh, inspection that way. Oh, go ahead. I can, uh, I can toss up an image of the uh, power zones if you'd like. Yeah, you got one for sure. <laughs> Nice. And management tomorrow. Good. I think it's a good presentation for everybody. <laughs> yes. Perfect. So the power zone, right where he's carrying the box, the arms are at, the elbows are at 90 degrees. That's your power lifting zone right there. Whenever you're carrying something or when you're pulling something off of a shelf, you're going to want to make sure that you're in within that power zone. That's why we put those heavier items on the bottom shelves so you can squat down grab that item, pull it into your power zone, and then stand up, right? We're using all of our muscles that are connected and we're avoiding injury that way. If that person were to simply just bend over at the hip and create almost like a, like a pivot, right? They would just bend over and then your hamstrings and the back of your legs and your low back, they're doing all of the lifting to bring you and the weight of that box back up. You need to squat down, keep everything in line, bring it into the power zone, and then stand up. Thank you, Jackie. That was very helpful. That was good yeah by all means keep the questions coming and yeah the the webinar it's it's all been recorded it'll be up on the website we'll send emails out too when it's been published and uh yeah for sure it's good get it out to your safety committee to your safety reps and to management it's racking and shelving and storage it's something that i find gets overlooked just because it's it's convenient for everybody every workplace has it they need it everybody has to store stuff but it gets overlooked because it's not something that we think about every day. We're too busy thinking about what we need to access on that racking, shelving, and storage, what we need to get off of it, than thinking about it supporting that item. How are we going to make sure that that item is still supported, right? Our storage is not ergonomically friendly. I have been to a lot of workplaces where that is that is the case for sure. My first slide took my words. There's no space. Oh, I know. 
And the biggest thing with the no space, see if you can purge. Get rid of some of that stock. If you don't need everything that's in there, get rid of it. Donate it by all means. Because it's, it's sometimes it's just the sheer volume and the amount that takes it up and is, is preventing you from having a good system, right? And if we're just hanging on to things just for the sake of having it, we might need it. Mm, if you haven't touched it in five years or even a year, you're probably not going to need it. I guess this year is a little bit more of a fluke because I haven't touched any of my conference presentation materials, the table gloss, the setup boost, any of that. I haven't touched that in over a year, but that's because of the pandemic. But I would say if you haven't touched it in the last couple of years, it's time for it to go. If you don't need it, just get rid of it by all means. And then that helps. And then you can actually organize the things that you do need and you do need access to and you can keep those organized and then you know where everything is. I know, but it's also easier said than done. <laughs> Oh, yes, but legal files need to stay for 10 years for sure. And then how many times have I walked in and I've seen file boxes stacked on top of file boxes and stacked on top of file boxes and the top of that box lid is caving in? That's, that's definitely a big issue I've seen in a lot of workplaces because those files, they need to be kept for legal reasons, right? But maybe we can come up with a better system or even find, instead of stacking them on top of each other, sliding a hard piece or like a little, like, two by four or something in between the boxes so that they have something hard to sit on so that they're not caving, right? It's because they weren't necessarily meant to stack, right? You can even rent out a storage unit if you guys have the funds for that or if there's one close by, by all means, rent that storage unit, keep it in there and then make sure that that's organized, that's got the proper proper lighting that you need and stuff, right? It's, it's a, sometimes it takes a little bit to get creative to find those solutions but especially those those filing boxes, I've seen them cave and cave and cave. And it's just, it's they've been sitting and they've been caved into each other for so long that as soon as you move one, the whole thing is going to come filing down, right? But you got to tackle it. Set some, si some time aside. See what can be gone. What needs to be put into a new box? How can we better store this? That's a mission for sure. Hmm. Planning on doing a recommendation for C to management for racking storage. Nice. Good. I think that's a, that's a good recommendation for sure. And I mean, if you can take some of it off site, by all means, not everybody's got the budget for that, right? But if you can, just try to get some of it out of the office. <laughs> yeah. And watch what you're stacking on top of each other for sure, right? Thank you so much. This has been great. The dialogue is fantastic. This is good. Okay. And then you look at this post once again. Perfect. Thank you, Jackie. That's good. Yeah, we'll get it posted. And then you can have it up there for uh, tomorrow. That's awesome. Perfect. Good. Alrighty. Now I just really want to go organize my whole house, to be honest. <laughs> uh, Jackie, we could probably uh, stop the recording for now. I think we would be okay for that.